seats so we can begin. Um, I'm a little nervous. I'm a good public speaker, but I don't usually speak in English. So I have, I know myself and I know that when I'm feeling confident, I speak better. So make me confident. Yeah! Woohoo! Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Woohoo! And also to my wife watching in the internet and all the crew from Wikimedia Israel. And it's really a pleasure and an honor to represent Wikimedia Israel in Wikimania 2024. We are presenting today the impact of the Wikipedia editing course for autistic people. It's a pilot project from Wikimedia Israel. We really take pride of this initiative. My name is André Frank. I'm originally from Brazil. I moved to Israel two years ago. And this is my first Wikimania. <laughs> Many more to come. Be'ezrat Hashem, if God wants. Okay, so let's use this one. Yeah. So, how it all began? That's the question, how it all began. And the answer is in the screen. Jonathan, or in Hebrew, Jonathan. And Jonathan is a 16-year-old boy living in Israel, studying in high school. He loves to drive. He loves to ride the bike. And also, he's a very sweet guy and happens to be our ED son, our executive director, Michal, who is also here. A round of applause to Michal. And she will help me, maybe, answering some questions. And Michal started in Wikimedia Israel in January 23 or February? February, okay. Uh, about one year and a half ago. And when Michal got into this wiki world, she realized it would be a very good environment for autistic people, like Jonathan himself. Because sometimes autistic people have to fit themselves into the environment and not be who they really are. And in Wikipedia, we have a lot of opportunities for the autistic people to release all of their potential and feel at home. So why not trying to make this thing happen? So we have 10 points. We are going to pass throughout each one of them really quickly. Introducing a little bit about Wikimedia Israel. We are an official chapter of the Wikimedia Foundation. We are in operation since 2007, offices in Tel Aviv. We work both in the Hebrew and Arabic languages. Seven workers, you can see all the team in this photo. It was our last day in the first uh, office before we moved. And we have about 40 volunteers. We have three volunteers here with us. Also applause for Gil and Laliv and Hannah. They're volunteers in Wikimedia Israel. And we have a very special focus on education. And of course, we've been running editing courses quite a while, uh, since 2007. Our main audience are senior citizens, and we have already hundreds of graduates of our course. Something about 500, Michal? Something about it, right. And, and at the beginning, we use it to make face-to-face uh, -face trainings, like this one, in our former office. But due to the pandemic in 2020, we started developing an online edition. And for many years already, we are having just uh, exclusively online trainings. And they are based in three components. Asynchronous learning, synchronous meeting, and personalized guidance provided by Volunteers, they're the best part. And you can see here R Ruti, Dr. Ruti Ausser, maybe she's uh, watching us in uh, YouTube as well. And for sure, she was the one to be presenting here. 
but she was very kind to give me the honor <laughs> instead of her. Why? So we spoke briefly when we're speaking about Jonathan, about the why, but we see the autistic editing courses like a win-win situation. Because in one hand, it expands Wikipedia knowledge base, it's an ongoing goal for every one of our initiatives, but on the other hand, we empower autistic individuals. So we can leverage some traits and some strengths of autistic uh, people, like deep-seated interest in specific topics, love of structure, attention to detail, keen eye for inconsistencies. And on the other hand, we give them a platform to share their knowledge, expand digital literacy, improve communication skills, and to be part of a collaborative project. So, indeed, it's a win-win situation. Okay, but as you can see throughout the entire presentation, we cannot do anything, but anything at all, by ourselves. And, okay, we are a great team, as you saw, seven people, but we are not experts in the autistic population. So, we knew from the start that we would not be able to run a project like this without some guidance and strong partnership. And we were very blessed to get this partnership through the REIM program. Okay, so in Israel, you have a very strong network of community centers. And one of the programs of the community centers is the REIM program that they specifically want to provide uh, a sense of belonging and social activities for youth and adolescents and adults who struggle with uh, isolation due to complex communication difficulties, among them also the autistic population. And we got a face inside the RAIN program that is offered. You can see her in the screen as well. And she was uh, every step of the way together with Wikimedia Israel, and without her, the project would not would take off. So what they brought to the table? First thing is marketing. Okay, I am the marketing manager of uh, Wikimedia Israel, and to be fair, I would not have a clue how to get to the autistic population without the RAIM program. So we have, maybe we have a wonderful program, but if we cannot market it, we cannot take it to the people, it's going to fall apart. So we relied on the list of contacts of the RAIM program, first of all. Second, selection. Okay, so we know that the Wiki movement and the Wiki projects, they can be accessed and they should be accessed by everyone. But when we're talking about a course, we have to meet some criteria. So it's a little bit different than when we are talking about a 101 training. Uh, per, uh, yes, uh, an individual session. We have to have some common ground, some technical abilities, some ways to be together. And we do selections for all our courses, also senior citizens. Sometimes senior citizens, they don't know how to use the computer so well. So we have more technical difficulties. Also, we have uh, courses for the general public. And we also make selection because sometimes they want to get into Wikipedia just to write about themselves. So we have to manage those expectations. And here it's not different. We had to make some kind of selection of our candidates and we would not know how to do it by ourselves. So we relied in an expert in the RAIN program. Third thing, uh, team preparation before beginning the course. Uh, offer from the RAIN program had many meetings with the instructor, with the volunteers in order to prepare them and also to prepare the participants. A previous meeting, uh, laying some uh, uh, 
a common ground, some guidance for the participants, and offer also in the first edition, and spoiler alert, we already ran a second edition of the course, and it's one of the measures of success. In the first edition, offer was to gather in each one of the Zoom meetings in order to guarantee that everything was running smoothly, and if it doesn't, so we had conversations between classes, between offer and the instructor, between offer and some participants. So it really was a very comprehensive and a very invaluable partnership. Whew. Okay, fail att attempts. So it's, it's, it's important, I think it's important to stress out that sometimes uh, seems that they, the things they don't uh, work as planned. And a little before Michal came in, and when she, she started sp speaking about her desire, her drive to make an artistic uh, course, we, realized, we discovered that before, one year before in 2022, we already had a failed attempt. And it was even the market, but it brought just one participant, one, not even one participant, one candidate. So in retrospect, we analyzed that maybe the population in, with which the nonprofit was, the, the specific nonprofit that uh, looked for us, was working with was not the right. So we uh, narrowed our audience to high functioning uh, individuals within the autistic spectrum, and not much effort was uh, invested. So if you don't put an effort, it's not going to happen. In 2023, before RAIN came to the picture, we also tried to make a partnership with another organization, a bigger organization, and they were highly motivated. But sometimes, big organizations, they fail to turn into practice all this goodwill. So Reim is a little smaller, and it came out to be. And in 2024, we were preparing for the second cohort, and we wanted to expand. And we tried with another nonprofit to add forces to Reim. And one interesting thing that they said to us, you know, it's very beautiful what you guys do in the Wiki universe. But we, in, this, in our nonprofit, we want to ensure that the autistic population get into the job market. So we are not uh, investing for them to get into the volunteer thing. Team building. We are nearly in the half of the presentation. Kola Kavod, you should be proud. So. Two main ingredients when you build a team for a course like that. Experience and motivation. So we took the best instructor we had, who is Gil. Maybe he's also watching. And he's a very energetic, very passionate about everything he does. And he adapted the course, the original course from Wikimedia Israel, to the autistic population. And also throughout the course, not only before, after each one of the classes, he would go back to the, pro, to the plan and make new adjustments based on his ongoing experience. And also, we need volunteers specifically for the personalized uh, uh, support and the project that they have to present in the, by the end of the course, we need volunteers. And we went to our 40 volunteers, and some of them honestly said, we are not able to help this time. And we really appreciate, because, you know, it's, it's a challenge. It's a different uh, kind of uh, uh, expectations and communication. And by the end of the day, we, ha we got five highly motivated volunteers that had previous experience with the autistic populations, and even one a Wikipedian that he is autistic himself, and he's really much the role model of uh, the program. Marketing, that's the fun part. <laughs> 
That's when I got to the picture. Oh, handsome. Beautiful smile. Okay, so uh, the first thing we had to worry about was how are we going to call this target audience? Because it's a very sensitive and a very complex matter in all languages, I think. So here we have some options in English that I found on the internet, how people sometimes, oh, you came, hello. Uh, how people relate to the autistics in English, autists, autist people, people with autism, people on the spectrum. And again, we relied on rain. So we have an expert. What they said, we took. So here you can see, you can, everyone can read in Hebrew, right? First time in the world. I, I don't know if it's correct, but okay. Kuks Tivabik Wikipedia, a writing course in Wikipedia. Lea Nashim Ala Spectrum, two people on the spectrum. Okay, and I made the design. Okay, not the picture, the picture I bought. Um, so after we released the marketing materials, we received a lot of comments. How do you relate to those people th this way? And we had a good answer. We are basing ourselves in our consultation in RAIM program. And as we said, we used RAIM uh, network and our social media channels. You can follow us and you're going to be able to understand everything because you have Google Translate. And the, the campaign was a complete Failure. Failure. It, 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 it didn't well. Okay, but Michal, she likes me. I don't know why. And even that I failed, she kept me into the project and into the Wikimedia Israel team. So we had uh, an angel, an angel called Ron Granot. And he is a PR guy, public relations. And he volunteered to share the news about the new editing program for the autistic population with all his media contacts. And we made the news. And we got the headlines of two of the biggest newspapers in Israel. Yediot Achronot and his, its digital version, Ynet, and Walla. And after we were in the news, then people started to come. And that make the magic. So an applause for Ron, who is not here, but wait, where's the applause? OK. And what are the results of the campaign? So we had 27 people registering, and about a half of it really turned into a participant of the course. We have the range from 16 years old to 47. And usually we don't take students that are under the age of 18. But once we had Reim and they could make a better selection process, we could get, get those young people also. Because we have another, another project for schools where we deal with the, the young guys. And with all the Aloch uh, Vashov, help me. How is Alok Vashov? Back and forth. Thanks to Ren. Ren Almog was the first employee of Wikimedia Israel. He's also, she's also with us today. Very nice. And now working for the foundation. And so we had two months delay because all the back and forth of the marketing campaign and also, unfortunately, because of the war. The course was intended to open in October 2024. And Israel, what? 2023, sorry. Yeah. So uh, afterwards, I'm going to make the change in the presentation, sorry, in October 2023, when the current war broke out in October 7th. Um, course design. So here, OK, we are already passing through the half presentation. 
And here's the, the overall structure of all, all uh, online courses for Wikipedia editing. It's, it's a case study by itself, a very successful one. So we have asynchronous learning inside Google Classroom. So we provide six learning units with texts and videos. And those units, they dwell specifically in the practical and technical side of Wikipedia to know how the community works, what, is, what are the, 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 the dynamics. And second, synchronous meetings through Zoom. So again, we have a little bit of knowledge sharing about the Wikipedia dynamics, but usually in the other courses, those synchronous meetings, they are dedicated to sharing the experience of getting into the Wikipedia community and making the first edits. And sometimes it's a hard process for newcomers. No, 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 it should be better. But we have a safe space to share all those experiences and also we use those synchronous uh, lessons to get into more in-depth discussions of hard subjects within the writing of the articles. And as we said before, we, has, we have also the personalized, personalized guidance of our volunteers. So those are the three uh, main pillars of our courses. And about the asynchronous learning, we didn't find the need to make so much of uh, adaptations for the autistic courses, but in item two and three, a lot of things had to happen. So some adaptations we made. First thing, we shortened the sessions, okay? Usually the sessions are one hour and a half with an additional half an hour for Q&A, and we shortened to one hour with an additional uh, 30 minutes. More systematic explanations and also breakout rooms for smaller groups making other uh, discussions. And we also we felt the need to replace some of the content. So let's take an example. So the, f the second unit in the synchronous meetings talks about how to analyze if a source is a good source or a bad source. And you need to have this feeling and to build this feeling about what is a good source and what is a bad source, what is reliable, what can be used in an article. And this feeling can be a little challenging for people in the autist spectrum. So what Gil made, he turned this feeling into words and numbers. And he built a chart with um, uh, multiple criteria and how many points each one of those criteria receive. And if you have a source with a mi minimum score, so you can rely it's a good source. And even in the session, they turn into a, like an American Idol kind of thing. Like the students, they had uh, the pre to present one source of information, like a candidate in American Idol, and the judges was to give them scores and to see if they were good enough. So here we have a, a screen picture of the farewell meeting with the group. And also, when we, short, we shorten the, the encounters, what makes the cut and what was left behind. So we understood throughout the course that the sharing, the initial experiences, and the in-depth discussions were not as successful as with the other people. So we took uh, a, a, a step back and we dedicated the lessons more to additional knowledge about the community and its criteria and dynamic. Group management. So it's hard. It's hard to, uh, first of all, build trust in Zoom meetings. And where you're speaking about 
a very specific uh, population even more. The online, they didn't know uh, anyone before. The online format, it's also, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit of code and it's a challenge to make a safe and warm environment. Also communication difficulties, it's, it's a thing that it was, we are also expecting. Uh, many differences between the participants' abilities in the technological side and some behavioral challenges. So we have uh, at least one participant that was not so nice to the instructors or the colleagues, other one who made a little bit of a mess inside the Hebrew Wikipedia. So we also got, you have to expect this kind of challenge when you open a course like that. So lessons learned in the, the side of group management. So one thing, we usually make our courses for, from 20 to 30 participants and we understood that 15 is the maximum for the autistic courses. Second, we had to make a contract. Okay, sometimes this structured, uh, the love for a structure if you give them a contract with very clear guidelines, they respond uh, well to that. So I myself, if I would get a contract like that in the beginning of the course, I would uh, be afraid of what I'm ex expecting. But they really enjoyed this kind of, of thing, usually. And third thing is speaking about boundaries. In the very first meeting, we, we see the need of making uh, some points of those contracts to verbalize them out loud. Volunteers, and it's the fun part also. So here we have a photograph of our, our, one of our volunteers uh, meetings in the National Library of Israel. And out of the five volunteers, two said that it was a, a little bit of a challenge and one of them even said that it was a little bit of a disappointment and he want, would not uh, want to continue in future editions. And the second one said, okay, it was a little bit of a drop down for me, but it's interesting, I want to continue. And the other three said it was a very enriching, very satisfying experience to be in this pilot project. And let's speak about why. Why is the one volunteer that he himself is from uh, the autistic community? And it was beautiful to have him as a volunteer, as an assistant instructor for the course. And without doubt, many, many participants uh, built a deep connection and identified themselves with uh, why, uh, and it was part of the magic. So if you guys think about some uh, maybe bringing this project to your community, if you can bring a volunteer that is also uh, in the autist spectrum, we highly recommend. So some lessons learned, we have to give comprehensive training. So Rain gave us some training, but we, we felt the need for a little bit more for the next editions and clear guidelines. People have to be patient, people have to be flexible, and sometimes people got it, sometimes they don't, and it's okay. Outcomes. We're getting to the end. Hmm. So how we measure success in this specific uh, project, we want to see how much they learned, how much they participated, how much they wrote, how much they were satisfied with the course itself, if they felt a feeling of accomplishment, if they desire to continue, and if we would be able to open a second cohort, and you know already that we did. And we took the perspective of the instructor, of offer, of the volunteers and the participants themselves through 
verbal feedback in the last encounter, written feedback in Google Forms, and also Wikipedia itself. So here are a little bit of the testimonials. You can download the presentation in EventEA and read it uh, more profoundly. But just to highlight, I found the course to be very interesting. The course was excellent. I enjoyed every moment. I can't wait to bring new knowledge to our country. A little bit of a team feedback offer from Rain Program. The tools they received on the course met their need to be part of a regular and real world. And Gil said um, the course was a unique opportunity to acquire new, sk new skills, work together, communication, etc. And a second cohort. So it's one uh, very important measure of success. We were able to open a second cohort that's just ended in July, and it was significantly more easier to market. We already made the news. We had people to speak out loud and to defend the program. And here, for instance, we have the testimonial of Adar, who gave the the authorization for us to share her words, her name, and her picture in order to market the second cohort. And then we managed to bring people that were more suitable for this kind of initiative. So we have a more balanced group, we got uh, increased collaboration, higher quality Wikipedia edits, and even younger editors, three uh, participants of the second cohort were just 15 years old and they were awesome. Yeah, very nice. Uh, so a little bit of data because we love data. So one thing from the first cohort I think it's very important to highlight is the six participants out of 14 they kept editing after the course ended, even three months, four months uh, after the course ended, they, was, they were still inside the wiki movement. And just to make a small comparison, as we said, the second group was a very, uh, it, it was more uh, active in Wikipedia itself. And just in the period, of the course itself, they added more bytes than the first one throughout a half a year. Conclusion. Why? Because it's a win-win situation. Partnership is crucial. You want to be able to team, you need experience, you need motivation. You're going to market, have to put a lot of effort, maybe even PR. Course design, so you have to make a tailored uh, course, a tailored fit course for this population in order to bring them and make a more diverse and inclusive wiki community. And you have also to be very patient and very supportive to manage communication difficulties and behavioral challenges. So, now it's my invitation. Are you ready to join us? Send me an email. Thank you. <laughs> okay, how many questions? Okay, Mikhailev, where are you? Give me a little support here. Yeah. Hi. Um, Hi. I got the mic first. What's uh, your name? Armenia Amanda. Okay. I, I'll have, I'll have, uh, Armenia will be fine. Okay. <laughs> uh, everything I got from your presentation is that the adaptation you actually did to your course was just to move from an implicit teaching to an explicit teaching would help actually all kind of people who don't have the implicit rule learned. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know if you are aware, but from the people I know in this room, I think there are maybe 15% at least which are on the OT spectrum. Wonderful. And uh, your presentation come across very patronizing. Mm -hmm. So if you want help with marketing, 
maybe actually talk to the many autistic people which are very active on the Wikimedia project because this doesn't give me any um, want to direct autistic people to your course, actually. Then I, I am listening to this presentation and I am like, maybe I would like to have the learning material, but I am certainly not sending any autistic people I know to this specific course with how you are presenting it. So you have a communication problem around your project. I can't speak about the content of the course, but the presentation of it is a very big problem. So uh, yeah, I think I'm not alone with that because I have seen some other snarky comments on social media. So yeah, I think you really need uh, on your team more contact with the actual autistic people who are very active on the Wikimedia community because different surveys have, have shown that between uh, active Wikimedia and we are between 15 and 25 percent of the active Wikimedian on the spectrum, because you are right with the, your very first uh, thing you said that Wikimedia is actually a very good space for autistic people because we can expand on our uh, specific interest in a way that is uh, useful for the generic community and where we are uh, valued for that instead of being seen as disruptive. So. I do think that you have good ideas and maybe the uh, teaching itself could be actually used for many other groups who don't have all the implicit rules of Wikipedia. But you need to work on how you are presenting that. Thank you very much. Thank you for the feedback. Applause, applauses for the, for the feedback. So if I was offensive in any means, okay, I really, really apologize was not at all my intentions, pretty much the contrary. And again, English is not my uh, first language, maybe it's my third language. And again, I'm just a marketing guy <laughs> that could come. So I really ask you, I ask one favor, do not give up in the thought of being in touch with us because of my poor presentation. Give me a second chance. Okay? Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Hannah. Can I? Um, uh, can I? Yeah. Um, hi. Um, I want to add to Harmonia's. Uh, I'm Vera. Vera yeah. de Kok, een veertje from the Netherlands. I'm also on the spectrum and an, an activist that also ad advocates for ch uh, autistic children, apart from my activism within the Wikimedia movement. Um, and I want to add to Armonia's uh, uh, the remark that the epitome of you not communicating with autistic individuals was pr as especially in the slide on failures, where you included the puzzle piece. If you want to communicate with autistic individuals, Please, please don't use the puzzle piece. It's a symbol that was first devised by uh, a hate group in the United States called Autism Speaks that should uh, be avoided at all costs because they hate autistic individuals and want us to be cured and invisible. Okay, I didn't know it. Th thanks for letting me know. Hi, I'm Hi. user Hexatekin and uh, I just um, I'm, I just started a research project that's, um, uh, I just emailed you, but it's called Investigating Neurodivergent Wikimedian Experiences, and we have a poster later today, um, but trying to also analyze current public discussions about being neurodivergent and participating in Wikimedia projects, because I, I, um, I'm trying to do research to understand neurodivergent people's experiences as editors and so I think we could like have some interesting discussion but um and also I'm plugging that poster session later uh because ge generally really interested in talking to um not just autistic people but people who identify as neurodivergent and I think that um yeah uh I uh other than that I'm I I think we could kind of like we 
this seems very interesting and we also uh, just a comment like feel like as a researcher i'm always like we should step back and understand the population that we're talking about and and and, and collaborate um from the ground up so people can self describe and um and uh figure out how to lead with accessibility um as we're designing things and so sometimes going slow uh or whatever you if you think about slow or fast that's a little bit subjective but just um i'm really interested in care and and design of projects like this because um because it's so personal to so many of us and because it's so um uh difficult to out yourself uh and um, so, and there's a, and outing yourself like ha comes with all kinds of risks too. So even participating in projects like this, there's mm -hmm. a lot of questions about outing yourself. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to bring that specifically that about masking and outing yourself and wondering, um, I guess it's, so I was commenting, but and if you have any reactions to that, I'll let. So uh, our time is over, but I, I really want to be in touch with you. Thanks. You, you already sent me an, an email, right? So thank you. And guys, you were an amazing audience. You gave me a lot of confidence. So keep enjoying Wikimania. Bye-bye.